Howdy. Welcome to another video. As you guys can see, we're updating a little bit of how we do things around here. So you guys are going to be seeing a couple new things on the YouTube videos, at least. So hi, how are you guys doing today? My name is Rodgon. I'm an art teacher and I like to teach people how to draw. I like to teach people how to draw anatomy. I like to teach people how to draw perspective. I like to teach people how to get excited about drawing the very basics and learning from those basics in order to be able to complete and create things that are normally hard to draw. So, hi, how is it going? I eat short people. How's it going? Makima, hi, how are you guys doing today? So, the one thing that I like to do is to allow the people in my chat and my stream to tell us what we should learn today. So I like to do that because first of all, it keeps me on my toes. Second, it makes me realize if I know a topic or not. And that is the way that I learn. I learned really quickly in life that the way that I learned best was to teach other people how to do something. And if I didn't know how to do it, then I knew how to actually proceed. Like if I didn't know how to explain bodies, well, obviously I didn't know how a body works. So I went and I learned how to draw bodies good enough to be able to explain it to other people. And that is the process in which I learn. I will be teaching this lesson or this method of learning in my uh, how to draw book uh, that is coming out hopefully soon. Holy shit. Like I, I'm so excited. Like it's coming out so nice. Uh, it's called How to Draw Everything, and it's going to just be a bunch of really cool like tips and tricks to be able to learn how to draw from zero, uh, but not like all those gimmicky ones where like, you draw a circle, you draw a circle and a guideline, and then you finish with a glorious eye. Ah. Like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So I'm breaking through those traditional barriers, and I'm creating, uh, I'm, I'm going to create a book that's essentially going to replace every college book ever made about design. At least for initial drawing. That's, that's my goal. My goal is to create something that is not just going to benefit me right now, but it's going to benefit thousands of people. And that's going to be my goal. So that is a little bit about me that you guys might not know. So I'm excited to purchase it. Please tag me. Oh, I wish that I could tag individual people, but there is about 400,000 of you amongst all my social medias that I need to make sure that I account for. So as much as every single person wants individual help, and I would love to be able to help you guys individually, it just doesn't always work out that way. It's not going to be possible for a single human to be able to create content and at the same time, be able to uh, manually help thousands of human beings as much as I would love to. I wish I had an army. Like I, I wish I had like clones. I wish that I had the ability to actually replicate myself a million times so that I could do all that stuff for each one of you guys and be individual mentor for every one of you. But unfortunately, that is why I have to teach the way that I teach. I teach through TikTok and I teach through Instagram and I teach through big social medias uh, and channels that reach thousands of people so that thousands of people don't have to pay for any personal mentoring or anything. Because I am not into this for the moolah. I'm into this because I want to help you guys learn. I want to help you guys grow. So let's talk about a very basic concept, right? Let's talk about the very basic concept of the face. Why is it hard? Why is the face hard? Why is, why is it hard to spell? Why is the face hard to draw? So why is it hard to draw? Like, if you look at a face in general, you're going to have a bunch of things that change. Like, it's never just a little happy face, right? It's never just, yay! It's not just a little simple, joyous little couple lines. When you want to get an actual detailed drawing, it goes into different perspective planes. It goes into different textures. It goes into different, like, mounds that come up in your body in the form of muscle and bone 
and like ridges that come across from like your skull being really close to your body or maybe you're chubby and you have a bunch of cheeks so the variation in all the faces is gigantic so you need to learn how to not necessarily draw a face but you need to learn how to draw the things inside the face you need to learn how many eyes we have that's an easy one right we have two eyes so we know that every face unless there's something wrong with it or you want to make it a cyclops or something that has more, it's going to have two eyes. So as long as we have two shapes in there that we understand, we're going to be able to progress to the next stage, which is drawing an actual shape of the eye. So let's start from, let, let's just start from scratch. I'm going to teach you guys how to draw a face from absolute scratch. Like you guys will not know how to draw anything and you guys will know how to draw something decent by the end of today's lesson. So grab your guys' sketchbooks, grab it while I take a sip of coffee, and you guys just go follow the YouTube over here. You guys are already watching me on YouTube, so thank you. But you guys can also like and do all that stuff. But you guys like over here on TikTok, and let's start our lesson in about like, what, 20 seconds? Let's see how many you guys can get in 20 seconds. Da, 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 da. Milky, say hi. Hi, how's it going, guys? Uh, please do this. It helps. It helps him. His ego is unrivaled. He does not do things unless he gets props. It's unbelievable. Uh, so please do this so we can learn. Like, like he's good at stuff, but like, he needs ego boosts. Like, that's his flaw. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take some coffee. All right, let's do this. Let's start our class. So, enough promoting and stuff. So, a face in general, most of the time, it's considered to be a spherical shape, right? Most of the time, we learn how to draw a face by drawing a ball, and then we draw features on the ball, and then we get better at drawing the ball, and then we draw, like, features that come out and stuff like that. So, we go and we start with this shape. The reason that it's so hard for people to draw things like the jaw, for example, is because this area becomes a big jumbled mess when you don't know what you're drawing. Like, you don't know where the cheekbone's supposed to go, you don't know this, so you start stylizing it by making this side bigger and then this bulbous, and then you don't know how big your forehead is because you just completely lost all of, like sense of like anatomy in this so you just end up like drawing really stylized stuff and then it's up really cute but then that just reinforces the fact that you're drawing things not necessarily like through like anatomy so you end up drawing really cool things for a long time and then you end up realizing at the end of it that you don't really understand what you're drawing because you've been drawing through style all the time so whenever anybody asks you to draw something in a different view aka like looking up or something you end up like, uh, uh, what do I do? How do I do that? You know? So that is the power of understanding perspective in general. It's understanding how to move your elements. And if you learn that from the get-go, if you learn that from the beginning, and you learn easy ways to do that, then you don't have to worry about doing this with more detail later and having it be daunting. So I'm going to teach you guys a different way to approach the phase that is not necessarily a sphere. It's going to be a completely different shape. And you guys, we're going to see how easy it is to be able to actually draw faces with not a circle and not a sphere. We're going to use a cylinder. And this is one that I like the most, and I've liked it a lot lately, because the cylinder provides you all the information you require to be able to draw faces. First of all, it gives you the connection with your actual body in the form of your ribcage shape. So if you have your ribcage, the top of your ribcage is going to be kind of like this circular slice that comes out and kind of resembles an eyeball shape. So you guys can just do a little eyeball shape at the top, and then the edges of these are going to be where your arms go. But that's not important right now. We're not talking about that. Okay? We're talking about the actual head. So when we're going in this little cylinder, whatever this hole is, is going to be the width of your head. This is not the width of your neck. Well, it is technically the width of your neck, too, because in a realistic form, your neck is going to be pretty close to the width of your actual head. So when you have like a very basic standard way, you can't really go more standard than this. You can have your cylinder and then just have, or your eyeball, have a cylinder coming out 
And then that is literally your neck and your head as the most standard shape possible. Like you cannot get more basic than this. This also provides you the top of your head, in this case where your hairline would go. And it also provides you, if you draw more circles in your cylinder, it provides you all the guidelines you need for your face in case you need something for your eyes, something for your mouth. And if you wanted to go into more detail, you could go into your nose and all your anatomies. Okay, so that is the easiest way to draw the face. Now, why is this easier? Let me show you guys examples. So whenever you are actually looking at a face from a profile, All you need to do to be able to draw the jaw moving up and down is to identify where your ears are. So let's draw perspective lines. We'll draw both sides of the actual shape. We do this by connecting two sides of the circles inside, the little perspective circles. You can do that by just connecting two dots within them, and then you have your ear. If you have your ear, all you got to do is choose where your chin is going to go. If you want your chin to be normal, just draw your chin here and connect them. And now you have your neck, your head, and your jaw. Now, you just got to thin it out a little bit so it looks proper, but it's so much easier to do that than it is to draw that jaw around the sphere. So let's try a harder one. Let's try looking up. So we have a sphere, a circle, a cylinder, sorry. The cylinder is going to be connected to your shoulders in a form of an eyeball. This is going to be where your shoulders go, so you guys don't know, like, don't have to guess anymore where your shoulders go. You guys already know, because that's the collarbone, and that's going to be your muscles that break up into your stuff. So this is an easy way to approach it in an anatomical fashion. So now you do this, you draw your cylinder lines, ba -ba -da -da -da, and then you choose where you want your chin to be. So how far up? Like this is, could go infinite. Like you don't need to follow the guidelines. This is just the guideline for the head. So this could stop right here. This could stop right here. This could stop right here. Whatever you decide that you want to do with the design. So let's choose a chin and let's choose your chin right here. And then I'm going to choose my ears right here. And then I'm going to connect them around my cylinder. Bye -bye. And now I have my face. It's actually a really, really, really funny, interesting way to approach it that's like not necessarily what you would see from any other video. Like It's just another way to identify how the face works. Now, let's see if we want to push it a little bit extreme. Let's say that we want to have somebody like, I don't know, like the Hulk. You know, somebody with a really, really little head, big body. So what do we do in that scenario? So let's come up with the rib cage first. Nice, big, burly shape. Then we're going to come up with the neck. The neck is going to be the base. This, this is going to be the base of the neck and the head. So let's come up with a really big one for that. But then the connection point in between the ears, which is what's important, is going to be a circle connecting both middles of the ear. And that provides you, so let's make a little one. We'll draw our ears. And then that connection point makes a big cylinder. A big one. And then you can draw your features in there. And ta-da! You have a really big dude with really big features. Okay? If you do the opposite, you go in the smaller section. You go with a big upper part in between your ears. Right? And then you go down into a smaller shape you end up with a character that has a lot less jaw like or like less like space here. So you can have somebody like this. You could have a little pin up by just bringing the shoulders up. You can just thin out the neck in the middle and just create like super overly cartoony ones. You know, so it's another way that you guys can approach this uh, that's not necessarily a cylinder. Uh, when, okay, so let's take another example that's really, really cool. So let's take that like noodle that you draw coming out of the eyeball. And then you want to make it look up. Well, have find your ears, draw your chin up, and then connect 
the bottom of the ear to the top of the chin. And oh my God, they end up being a little easier. And those positions just end up being easier. Because it's easier to figure out this area when you have a cylinder. <laughs> so essentially, what you're doing is learning how to move things around your neck. So you use the cylinder to come up with mapping points and all you got to do is rotate around your shape to go from one side to the other, creating the surface that you're going to be using for your head. And then from there, depending on your knowledge of anatomy and perspective, that is where you start adding all your features. And that is how you can easily turn a cylinder into a face. And pretty good ones too. Like there's like there's like you can start playing around with the shape too. Like if you have your eye shape at the bottom, and then you have like a noodle that comes out, and it's just weird. Like you just bend stuff. You just start playing around with different cylinders, then you start having the ability to draw really interesting shapes, really really quickly. And you have a whole other set of skills or like abilities to create whenever you have like art block and stuff. So if you are seeing that you're drawing the same face by drawing them, you know, with a sphere, try breaking up the shape. Try seeing if you can actually draw it with a cylinder. The beauty of a cylinder too is that all these circles can go either way, right? Like this could be the top of the head and we can be looking at it from the back. This could be the front of the head. This could be the side. These give you so much perspective. Like it gives you the ability to see it in like, like a cube like that. Or you can see it like in any way you want because this is all how you perceive it. This could be from the bottom up having the hair right here, the neck right there. And once you're able to see things like this, right? Like once you're able to just identify a front and a back and a side and just from that same shape, you guys will be able to draw people in public. You guys will be able to draw things that you guys never really thought you could. Uh, you guys will be able to imagine things that didn't exist and you guys will be able to just draw it. Just because you guys will learn how to create something simple from just simple shapes and that is the most important lesson I can probably teach you. Like this is the reason you learn all your foundations. Your foundations are not there so you guys just follow random rules that anybody else has like set in place. You guys have to follow those foundations to just set forth your way of thinking and the way that you guys visualize things. If you guys don't push your envelopes and you guys call yourselves creatives, well, let's say that uh, maybe you're not living up to the expectations, right? We have this big responsibility to the world as people that can see all these things. People can see awesome images in their brain and that's a power that we have. And if we take that power and we actually enhance it and then we embrace it and then we share it with everybody, not just for our own gain, but in order to grow community, make everything better for everybody, easier so that more people can create, then that's when we are going to finally be on like a good road for like, you know, a good, nice community of healthy, supportive people that will always just want to see other people succeed. And that is what I want to do with my channel. That is why now I'm using my webcam to be able to take video of me so you guys can see me. Because sometimes you guys actually like, uh, if, yeah, if you go to YouTube, this video will have commentary alongside with video as well. So you guys can see my face if you guys want. Uh, I don't know. I just want to be more of a, a part of you guys and you guys... If you guys recognize me, I would love to like just sit down and talk with you guys as well. So it's not a bid for attention. <laughs> it's not so people recognize me in public and tell me I'm a great teacher. No, that would never be the reason. <laughs> that would never be the reason why someone like me would do that. Oh, no. I haven't drawn in two months. How do I start again? Well, there's a simple solution to that. 
If you have a sketchbook in front of you right now, all you got to do is grab that pen or pencil that's close by and draw a circle. And then if that felt eh, draw another one. If that felt eh, draw another and another and another and another and another and another and another. And then just let your paper and your pen touch. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you're just naturally going to start doodling things because that's how your brain works. We're like a printer that is really slow to normally process things, right? If you recognize a tree, well, you can probably draw a semblance of a tree because you have the ability to replicate things on paper. So all you got to do is go look at trees and then you'll learn how to draw different types of trees, even if they're really simple. Right? So it's the more that you practice drawing different kinds of trees, the better you're going to do at drawing trees, even from memory. You're going to draw dry, dried up trees, big floral trees, trees with branches and things like that popping out. All that stuff just comes naturally as you actually start drawing. The trick to learning how to draw it's not necessarily being technically adept at actually holding a pencil or drawing with certain techniques. The learning curve to drawing is so weird and so varied from different people to different people that it's kind of hard to gauge how one person's going to grow as opposed to another. It's kind of like uh, you know, like like knowing like the difference between how fast a fish will learn how to swim and how fast an elephant will learn how to run. It's just kind of hard to gauge because everybody's just so independent. Everybody's so different. So you need to learn to just gauge how you learn. You need that's the, that's what thing that takes the longest. Understanding how you personally learn. And then how to adapt that to a never-ending flow of knowledge and happiness doing so. And that all comes with the ability, and this is the key. This is the key to success in art. You guys ready? Are you guys ready? This is the one key that is going to be the most critical thing in your career. Okay? And this is going to be a big factor if you're going to quit or if you're not going to quit. And I can tell you this sincerely and confidently. And it's if you are bored with the everyday routine that it takes to actually grow. If you are bored with an everyday routine that involves you actually applying, drawing things you don't like, drawing things you don't necessarily want to so that you can draw the things you want to. If you don't get bored with that monotony, you are set. You are set. That is the trick. You don't have to be the best. You just have to want to enjoy doing this enough or just as much as the best. Because then you're not going to give up when things get hard. You're not going to give up when you don't make money. You're not going to give up when you don't have like the drive or the inspiration. Like People give up because a lot of things. And it should never be because you don't like what you're doing. That is the one measure that you guys will never should have to question. Because this is a job that most people do not make like a ridiculous amount of money with. It's not a job you get into it for financial gain. It's not. It's just not. If you are into it thinking you're going to be the next Walt Disney, perfect. Don't consider yourself the next rich Walt Disney until you actually are able to do that. So don't count on animation or illustration to be one of those careers like being a doctor and being like a dentist or even like a chemist is going to provide you that sort of uh, financial stability. It comes along with the actual change, though. The only thing that's beneficial that comes the huge benefit of it is you get to be creative you get to not be bored every day of your life you get to not be in front of a desk if you don't choose to you get to show people laughter and happiness and you get to make the world a little bit better with everything that you draw that is that is the benefit of art and it's not financial and it's not 
going to probably ever be the biggest driven factor for anyone going into the arts. So if you are that, go into an, like, be an art agent, be a person that can actually like pursue money and be happy doing so. But it's not going to normally be the creative person that is behind the, all the art that we draw. Like it's normally just not like I, I don't think I've ever met a creative person that's genuinely just 100 percent happy creating that is normally very happy having to deal with the financials of things. So it's just not something that we enjoy, at least not a lot of the people that I've met. So, you know, I don't enjoy it either. I wish that I just had an agent to like take care of all the like stuff like that. And I just got to create. But unfortunately, that's not how the world works. And, you know, in this day and age, you can't just be an artist. You have to be a, an artist, an agent. You have to be a marketer. You have to be a social media strategist. You have to be absolutely everything and anything in, under me, son. So it becomes a little harder to be able to do um, everything at once and still maintain a high level of proficiency in everything. It's just difficult. So you got to pick your battles. You got to pick what you want to focus on. And if you came into the the game late, if you came in a little later than others, uh, I came in when I was like 19. So I came in a little bit later than other people that had started when they were like, you know, like in their mother's wombs and stuff. You know, so I just I just focused down more and I just buckled down more. And you know what? When things got tough and even like girlfriends told me that they thought that I should change careers because I wasn't making enough money for them and stuff like that. You know, I, I, those, those thoughts haunt me sometimes. Those thoughts haunt me and like I second guess myself a lot. And for a while I quit just to pursue what other people wanted me. And I, I felt miserable. I was absolutely miserable. Like I cannot explain to you how miserable I was trying to just complain with what other people wanted of me. That's just against my nature as an artist. And it's going to be against the nature of a lot of you too. Those thoughts should drive you to become better. Like somebody else's thoughts. No, 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 no. See, see, I don't understand. I don't think how, I don't know how people care so much about what other people think. Like my life is my life. My career is my career. I'm the one that's going to spend hundreds of hours doing whatever I choose to go into. And it's literally how you essentially uh, bet your financial future on. So if you go to college and you go to college with um, art in mind, you are backing your financial future on the fact that you will create awesome art or that you will be employable or that you will be able to actually make money with what you are actually trying to go and study. Passion is great. Passion without a financial means is not great. (laughs) You don't have the luxury sometimes to be able to do that. People that are privileged can. You know, people that have like endless amounts of money, like, yeah, of course, they can pursue anything they want. But most of the time, us as young individuals get the chance to pursue one thing and that's normally the one thing that we normally cling to in order to be able to make a living the rest of our lives. Most people go into like engineering, lawyering, blah, 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 graphic design and stuff like that. A lot of those fields, a lot of people go into because they think they're easy. They think they're going to uh, be awesome because they're creative. And then at the end of the day, they realize, holy shit, this is incredibly, annoyingly, sometimes annoyingly repetitive. And it's sometimes just not something that people are up for. Like people are just not up for repetition, boring boring repetition to some people. I don't find it boring, but some people do. Some people find it incredibly taxing to just be drawing a school all day or drawing circles inside circles until they get it. But there's a reason that there's people that succeed in this and there's people that don't. No one said art was easy. Art is not easy. Art is not easy at all. It's not. It's not easy at all in the slightest. 
And if anybody told you that art was easy or given or somebody just gets the chance to do it because they get to be creative one day, uh-uh, uh-uh. There is a huge barrier of entry when it comes down to being a part of this world. It's just that it's so blurred because there's so many different kinds of art that, you know, people think that it's just easy because there's so, such a variety. And it's just not the case. Like, all art is hard. Like, cra- being a craftsman, hard. Being like a construction worker, that's art. That's hard. You know, like all kinds of art are hard. It's not easy to be creative 24-7 on call. It's just not. That is just incredibly annoying and taxing. And sometimes it drives you insane because you don't want to be creative for other people. Most of the time we want to be creative for ourselves, but we don't get a chance to because we don't make money with it. See where I'm going? You study to go to school So you can make money, so you can create the things you want. And then you work on other people's stuff while you try to figure out how to make money so you can make your own thing. All the things that you make money for other people, all those things that you've been working on, banners, posters, logos, all that stuff you could be doing for yourself. Okay, You could be doing all that stuff, that one pamphlet that you did for advertisement, you could do it for your own advertisement, come up with a product. If you guys want, oh, if you guys did a kid's book for a company and they paid you a thousand dollars to draw a book, guess what? You could do your own book and charge people 10 bucks and then just put it on Amazon and see what happens. You'll probably make more than a thousand dollars and it's going to be your project. It's going to be yours, right? Like it's so, it's fascinating to me that most of the time we find ourselves easier to be creative for other humans than it is to be creative for ourselves because we like to be told what to do we like to know what other people can do and we don't have to fail or feel like failures if our idea doesn't actually come through because oh no it didn't fall it it wasn't my fault that it failed it was a bad idea yeah of course it wasn't your idea. No, of course. Ah, nah, blah, blah, blah. So we use a lot of excuses in order to be able to uh, justify the fact that we don't want to push for our own selves. We don't want to, you know, try and fail. Trying and failing sucks. Okay? So it's just, you know, it's something that you have to keep in mind. As an artist, you're going to be put through a lot. You're going to be put through the ringer, man. Like clients will test you. uh, Even your own pet projects will test you. If you ever try to bring other people in, they're never going to be as passionate about the projects as you are. And then you have to deal with that. And then it's just like, dude, it's, it's a task and a half to be an artist. And most people just don't understand that until they get into it. And then when they do get into it, they're like, oh, shit, this is hard. And then they just give up. Like, I've seen so many people drop out of this career. So many people. Like, my career, essentially, is like just seeing people just drop left and right because they just couldn't do it. And it's so sad to do that. And too so sad to see that happen. It's just so incredibly sad to see all your colleagues like push their dreams for years and then they just give up. No, the reason that I do what I do and the reason that you guys are seeing these streams and these lessons is because I don't want you guys to go through the same thing they did. The reason that I'm doing this for all of you is so that you guys don't have to struggle with that. You know, so you have a better fighting chance at going out there and actually succeeding without having to spend every dime that you've earned, every dime you've made into a person that's just trying to milk you for as much information as they can. You know, like, that's just not what I want to do. Like, the reason also I do this is just because I dislike art, like art schools. I feel like I got cheated when I went to art school Like, I hustled to go into it, and then, you know, it led to a lot of financial troubles because of it. Uh, It led to a career, 
but not the career that I wanted. I got into art school because I wanted to draw cartoons and I wanted to joyfully journal my life while I just did some creative job. And they told me that that would never be okay. They told me that I should follow my 3D animation because that's what was popular and that's what they were hiring for. I never wanted to be hired. I didn't care about being an employee. You know, I've always had the mentality of uh, why the hell would I work for someone else if I can just, you know, like learn the things and do it for myself. Like I'm a whole studio in one like little brain right here, right? And so are you guys. All of you are little studios within your own mindsets. And you guys can do all these things just as much as I can. It's just a matter of actually taking the time and starting with those 15 minutes a day, right? 15 minutes a day doing any task, just 15 minutes, be it working out, be it drawing, be whatever. Like what you guys see before you is the culmination of 15 minutes a day over the span of seven years. And that's the YouTube channel. That is the Instagram. That's the TikTok. That's the lessons. That's the videos. That's everything. It all started with taking 15 minutes out of my day to be able to focus on what I wanted to do. And those 15 minutes of dedicated time every day those 15 minutes led to what you guys see before you. It took a little while, of course, but it's something that you guys can do too because I'm not a particularly like, like majestically like inclined human being that was just naturally gifted. This is just what all the things you see, all the things that you guys see in front of you is hard work and it's just time and dedication and working my butt off. So 15 minutes a day is all it takes, guys. Minute, then some minutes, and that's all you guys need to do. All right, guys, that's going to be our it for our lesson plan today. Thank you so much. I have a little bit of video editing to do before I can upload this on YouTube. But you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And like always, I want to leave you guys with a nice little message so you guys have a wonderful day and you guys have a fantastic start to your week. So with that being said, I want you guys to go out into the world this week. And I want you guys to... Show someone some kindness. Show someone some love. Okay, That is something that is required in this world a lot more than people think. And you'd be surprised how much a little act of kindness will go a long way to making someone else feel special. So, love a little. I want you guys to also go out into the world and journey out. Take a breath of fresh air. Make sure that you guys get out into the sun a little bit today. And I want you guys to, love, I want you guys to live a little. Then, as you guys go around in your journey, I want you guys to call your favorite friend up and then I want you guys to ask them for the coolest dad joke or pun or anything that is going to make you smile and joyful because you need to go laugh a little. And we are artists, so we can't get away from this ever. This is something we are going to have to do for the rest of our lives as long as we want to be an artist. And that is to draw a lot. If you guys drew alongside with me today, you guys have met your quota. But whoever said that there was a quota to drawing probably isn't a good artist anyways. So go out, draw to your heart's content. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit something that gets you inspired to draw. If not, there's hundreds of more videos on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to go check that out, I will uh, eventually do a couple giveaways because I got a couple cool things for you guys. Uh, and eventually that'll happen i'm sorry i'm just horrible and i have adhd brain so i always forget things but i do love you all have a wonderful day have a wonderful week and i'll see you guys tomorrow for another lesson take care